Hello everyone and welcome to another Cutrate Commander Quick Precon Upgrade Guide. The series where we take precon decks we're unable to dedicate a full upgrade guide to and bring them up to cutrate standards. My name is Grazit and today we'll be covering the Warhammer 40k, the Ruinous Powers Precon and its face commander, Abaddon the Despoiler. To which we'll be adding roughly $35 worth of upgrades to to bring its power level up on a budget. But before we continue, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this content and would like me to continue making more videos like this in the future. And if you're feeling particularly generous, please consider buying me a coffee at the link in the description to keep me caffeinated as I work on more of these builds. So, with that out of the way, let's start by taking a look at the commander and playstyle. Abaddon the Despoiler is a 5-5 Astartes warrior with Trample that costs 2 and Grixis and has the following ability. Mark of Chaos Ascendant. During our turn, spells we cast from our hand with mana value X or less have Cascade, where X is the total amount of life our opponents have lost that turn. Breaking down Abaddon's core stats, he possesses a hefty CMC, a typical stat block for his cost with built-in Trample to more easily get in for damage, and a damage-focused ability that potentially gives our entire deck Cascade based on the amount of damage we're able to deal to our opponents. Even just at surface level, Abaddon's ability is quite powerful, effectively allowing us to get two spells for the price of one off every spell we cast. And as we dig deeper, it becomes clear that meeting the requirements isn't even that difficult, between Abaddon himself having a beefy stat block and built-in way to crash through blockers to get in for damage, and our colors having no shortage of big evasive and or trampling creatures that can get in for damage alongside Abaddon, and plenty of AoE burn effects that can damage all our opponents simultaneously, making it relatively simple to get this ability online and begin generating extra value as we cast our spells. So, based on this ability, it becomes clear that Abaddon is a damage-focused commander, aiming to dish out as much damage as possible to allow our spells to cascade into other spells. But sadly, the base build doesn't exactly lend itself to this playstyle too well. True to form for a deck representing the forces of chaos, the base deck has a lot of different pieces that want to do a lot of different things, ranging from some focusing on demon tribal, others focusing on spell slinging, and others still doing their own thing entirely independent of the deck itself. And while Abaddon, the champion of chaos undivided that he is, does an admirable job at leading this warband under one banner, with a bit of refinement we can make his job a lot easier and the deck as a whole more effective. Firstly, we'll be keeping the larger evasive members of the core build that can reliably get in for damage, and swapping out the more unique members that will find better homes in other builds to add in passive and repeatable sources of AoE burn, which will more reliably allow Abaddon to grant Cascade to our spells, which in turn will get us even more burn spells from our deck to torch our opponent's life totals even faster. And to take advantage of all the cascading we'll be doing and damage we'll be dealing, we'll be adding several payoffs for both to net us even more value as we cast our spells from exile and burn our opponents. And finally, since Abaddon is such a critical part of the build, we'll be adding several ways to keep him alive, ensuring that he can keep cascading our spells for as long as possible. Now, let's not keep our Dark Masters waiting, as the Chaos Gods hunger for slaughter and their champion, the War Master of Chaos and clone progeny of the Arch Traitor Horus himself, Abaddon is more than willing to oblige them. And unlike his Primarch, he would not fail. Already, the shining beacon of the Imperium that was Cadia has been obliterated under the onslaught of his 13th Black Crusade, its fall allowing the Eye of Terror to grow unimpeded, spewing forth endless hordes of horrific daemons to consume entire systems, while he and his Black Legion push further and further into Imperial space, carving a bloody path to Holy Terra itself, and once its defenders have been slaughtered, he will personally rip the Corpse Emperor from his Golden Throne, succeeding where Horus failed and claiming the galaxy for the ruinous powers at last. So, now that we know a bit more about the commander and playstyle, let's jump right into the upgrades. Starting off with our creature upgrades, we'll begin by cutting some of the non-damaged focus entrance from the base build to make room for more AoE sources of burn. Unfortunately, that means the legends Karn the Betrayer and Lucius the Eternal will both be getting the axe here, each having interesting and unique abilities which sadly don't get their chance to shine in this build and would be better served elsewhere, making room for the AoE burn-oriented Loyal Subordinate and Thermo Alchemist, whose repeatable AoE life loss and burn allow Abaddon to reliably give our higher CMC spells Cascade, boosting the deck's consistency considerably. The same goes for Tallyman of Nurgle, Aspiring Champion, and Chaos Terminator Lord, whose Death Matters draw, Demon-themed Self-Polymorph, and Double Strike Granting would all find better homes in Aristocrats, Polymorph, and Voltron builds respectively. 
being swapped out in favor of Keen Duelist, Dustmantle Seer, and Stormfist Crusader, which again add even more sources of AoE damage to the build to trigger Abaddon, while also serving as decent card advantage sources to help reload our hands with spells to keep cascading with. We'll then be cutting some of the spell-focused members of the core build, with Magnus the Red and Pink Horror losing their spots since this build doesn't have the critical mass of instants and sorceries to support their abilities, and honestly would find a better home in a build led by Magnus, with Rankle Master of Pranks and Tectonic Giant taking their place, each again providing our build with solid AoE burn as well as draw when they swing in to keep piling on the damage as they restock our hands. Great Unclean One is then the next entrant from the base build to get replaced, which one would think would actually be a good addition to this build with its repeatable AoE life loss, but since this occurs on our end step it makes it very awkward for Abaddon to take advantage of. So we'll exchange it for Spawn of Mayhem, whose AoE burn occurs on our upkeep to make it much easier to take advantage of, while its reduced spectacle cost along with built-in evasion and trample lets it come down much earlier than its predecessor and swing in for damage itself fairly reliably. Then pivoting from AoE burn creatures to Death Matters payoffs, we'll be scrapping Hellbrute, whose self-reanimation effect doesn't do too much for us in this build, and replacing it with Florian Voldaren Scion, who takes full advantage of the amount of burn we're able to dish out by turning it into card selection and impulse draw, letting us dig deep into our deck equal to the amount of life our opponents lost that turn and allowing us to cast the best spell from among them. And lastly, as our final changes to our creature base, we'll be swapping out Sanzor Shaman and Exalted Flamer of Zinch, whose spell-focused abilities are much better suited in a build with Magnus the Red at the helm, and giving their spots to Wild Magic Sorcerer and Nelfeshni, both of which get us extra value as Abaddon cascades our spells in the form of additional cascades and copying cascaded spells respectively. Our instant upgrades are then up next, with the only change we'll be making here being swapping out Nurgle's Conscription, which is a great instant speed reanimation spell and source of graveyard hate that sadly doesn't mesh too well with this build's game plan, but would be a great addition to another graveyard-focused build, and replacing it with Bedevil, which is a generically good source of targeted removal to help us deal with a wide variety of threats. It's then on to our sorcery upgrades, which again won't be seeing too many changes, with only the spell focus to reverberate and pass in flames being moved to our slowly growing Magnus deck pile to make room for the cascade friendly Ancestral Vision and Profane Tutor, both of whose CMC0 cost will guarantee we hit them while cascading off our CMC1 spells, in addition to allowing us to cast them immediately if we do cascade into them since it ignores casting restrictions, bypassing the need to suspend them first and immediately allowing us to benefit from the card advantage and tutoring they provide. Proceeding to our enchantment upgrades, we'll be making a significant amount of changes in this category to provide the build with even more sources of passive AoE damage, starting with the Demon's Herald of Slaanesh and Venom Crawler getting cut, each fitting better in a Demon Tribal deck and Aristocrats build respectively, and being replaced with Sanctum of Stone Fangs and Palace Siege, both providing our build with continual AoE life drain to continue dealing damage while also helping us heal up from the damage that our more indiscriminate burn spells inflict on us. We then have another pair of daemons getting the axe, with Seeker of Slanesh being a better fit in a more forced combat focused build, and Blood Crusher of Corn not having enough big bodies to take advantage of the AoE trample it provides, being replaced with Protection Racket and Court of Ambition respectively, which again provide passive AoE burn turn after turn, as well as much needed card advantage to ensure that our game plan doesn't run out of fuel. Then as our last creature for enchantment swap, Knight Rampager's random attacks and on-death damage will be scrapped in order to make room for Descent into Avernus, which is not only a source of AoE burn that grows bigger and bigger with each passing turn, but also produces an equal amount of treasures to go along with it. And while these treasures are symmetrical, they often benefit us much more than our opponents by allowing us to cascade into even more burn spells and really kick our damage into overdrive. Then for our last two enchantment swaps, we'll be removing the Ruinous Powers, whose theft-based burn doesn't really work with Abaddon's Cascade, so we'll be replacing it with Passionate Archaeologist, which turns all the spells that Abaddon cascades into into additional burn, and lastly cutting Nurgle's Rot, which is a cheap source of repeatable token creation but again doesn't really fit into this build, so we'll be exchanging it for Blessing of Leeches, which gives us a flash speed way to keep Abaddon alive through most conventional forms of removal so we can continue cascading our spells. Moving on to our artifact changes, we'll first begin by refining the build ramp package, cutting the subpar rock, commander sphere, the debatably bad land, temple of the false god, and the awkward to use saga, the Horus heresy, and replacing them with the mana rocks, Rakdos signet, Demir signet, and is it signet, all of which help us speed up and fix our mana base to help us get to Abaddon faster and begin cascading our spells. 
Warstorm Surge will also be losing its spot here, being a bit too slow for our needs despite dealing good damage in the late game, with Cryptolith Fragment taking its place, which both serves as another mana rock to help speed up and fix our mana base, as well as a repeatable source of AoE damage every time we use it to enable Abaddon's Cascade. And for our last artifact changes, we'll be swapping out the equipment Assault Suit and Drachnian, whose offensive stat boosts are nice, but a bit redundant in this build as we already have plenty of other, arguably better sources of damage at our disposal, so we'll be replacing them with the defensive options Norox Stealth Suit and Swift Foot Boots, both of which give Abaddon some solid protection against targeted removal, which he'll need since this deck loses about half its effectiveness if he's not online. We'll then be introducing a Planeswalker to the build, removing the Storage Land Molten Slag Heap since it's no longer necessary thanks to our improved ramp package, and adding in Giadrone de Hada, whose plus one is yet another source of repeatable AoE drain to burn down our opponent's life totals while healing our own, and whose minus three and ult are decent ways to sway our opponent's creatures over to our side, which is both mechanically useful to clear blockers or get extra damage in, as well as being very flavorful as our opponent's creatures succumb to the corruption of chaos. And finally, reaching our land upgrades, we'll start by swapping out the Gainlands, Dismal Backwater, and Swiftwater Cliffs for the Painlands, Sulphur Springs, and Shivan Reef, both of which help speed up our mana base by not coming into play tapped while still tapping for two of our colors. Similarly, the Cycling Land Baron Moor will be cut in favor of the Battle Land Smoldering Marsh to accelerate our mana base even further. And lastly, we'll be terraforming our other cycling land, Forgotten Cave, into the utility land, Tyrite Sanctum, providing us with yet another way to keep Abaddon alive, as well as technically ascending him to Chaos Godhood, which is quite flavorful. So, now that we've covered all 32 cards we'll be upgrading from the core build, let's take a look at the breakdown for this quick pre-con upgrade. This deck currently has 25 creatures including the Commander, 9 Instants, 8 Sorceries, 8 Enchantments, 13 Artifacts, 1 Planeswalker, and 36 Lands. Looking at the stats add matter to our game plan, we have 18 sources of single target or AoE burn, 10 creatures with built-in evasion, 5 creatures with built-in trample, 8 cards that either have or can grant cascade, 6 cards that care about spells cascading, 3 cards that care about when we or our opponents take damage, and 4 sources of protection against targeting or destruction giving our build plenty of ways to deal damage to our opponents either via burn or getting our creatures over or through their blockers to enable Abaddon's Cascade, additional sources of Cascade to give us even more free spells as we cast them, a decent number of payoffs for cascading spells and dealing damage to our opponents to net us even more value, and a handful of ways to keep Abaddon alive to continue leading his Black Legion for as long as possible. For general deck stats, we have 13 ramp sources, 15 card draw sources, 10 targeted removal sources, and 5 board wipes. Our draw sources being high since a few of them are situational, either forcing our opponents to take damage or let us draw, while our ramp removal and wipes fall within more typical numbers. Looking at our mana curve, we have 2 0 drops, 4 1 drops, 14 2 drops, 12 3 drops, 11 4 drops, 10 5 drops, 7 6 drops, 1 7 drop, 1 8 drop, 1 9 drop, and 1 11 drop, leaving us with a mid to heavy weight curve that aims to get AoE sources of damage out quickly, followed by our commander so we can start cascading our spells as quickly as possible, dropping more and more burn and damage onto the table until we reduce our opponent's life totals to cinders. The final price of our upgrades then come out to be 3532. The price of these upgrades was calculated by using the cheapest listed marketplace price on TCG Player at the time of this recording. For side grades, Spear Spewer and Sin Prodder are both decent sources of burn to keep whittling down our opponent's life totals, and Inevitable Betrayal and Wheel of Fate are another pair of CMC Zero spells that are great to cheat out via Cascade for their powerful effects. Then for further upgrades, Darksteel Plate and Lightning Greaves both serve as additional ways to keep Abaddon alive for as long as possible to continue cascading our spells for us. Rakdos Lord of Riots is a powerful damage payoff that not only reduces the cost of all our creatures as we deal damage, but is also a massive evasive trampling beat stick himself. Twilight Prophet is a very solid form of passive draw as well as AoE Drain that takes advantage of our build's high volume of high CMC spells. Prosper Tomebound is a decent source of draw and powerful payoff for cascading our spells to create treasures as we do so, and Naheb the Eternal is another spectacular source of ramp, generating us an insane amount of red mana on our main 2 once our AoE sources of burn are set up. 
And finally, the Tudor's Vampiric Tudor and Imperial Seal are both superb additions, allowing us to perfectly set up our next draw or next spell to cascade into depending on what we need. And with the recent reprinting reducing the price of Imperial Seal from $600 to the bargain price of $80 instead, making it much more reasonable, meaning we'll just need to survive off instant ramen for a week or two rather than two months. Thanks everyone for sticking around until the end of the video. With the Forces of Chaos covered, our next quick precon upgrade will be covering the Necron Dynasty's precon and its face commander, the leader of the Necroteer Empire, Zarek the Silent King. So look forward to a graveyard-focused artifact build featuring him next week. And as usual, please like, comment, and subscribe if you liked the content to help keep the channel growing. And if you really liked it, please consider buying me a coffee at the link in the description to give me the energy I need to make these extra episodes. And again, since this is a new series, please let me know what you think in the comments. Feedback is always appreciated. And with that, have a good one folks, and stay safe.